In this episode of Tony's Fords and Mustangs, I travel all the way to Texas to Pruitt Ford for this, a direct replacement for my car. So how'd this happen so fast? I was suddenly in the market. So like everyone else, I'm on the internet searching. A white Mach 1 and the handling packages were my only must-to-have items. Right away, it's clear. There are dealers out there whose prices are up there, especially on used cars. But there were also dealers who were willing to sell new cars at MSRP. I find a suitable car only 28 miles from my home, a 2021. It had more than I wanted, leather Recaros. But if the dealer was reasonable and wanted to work with me, maybe we could put this together. That didn't happen. They didn't want to budge in their price, and the history that was told to me wasn't clearly what the Carfax was stating. Next, I find a 2022 Mach 1 in Burke Bennett, Texas, a place I'd never heard of. But the car is very close to what I ordered in January 2021, so I give him a call. The dealership was Pruitt Ford. The salesman I talked to, Jeff Turner, after relaying my story, was somewhat sympathetic. I told him I'm willing to pay MSRP, but no more. After he talks with his management, the dealer agrees. I think they both actually looked at my video of the crash, and that may have helped me a little bit. I give them a deposit and make arrangements to pick it up. Thursday morning, first thing, I'm on a plane from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to Philadelphia. Then from Philadelphia to Dallas. Then from Dallas to Wichita Falls, Texas. At 6.30 p.m. Texas time, Jeff is out front to pick me up. We make the 20-minute drive to Pruitt Ford, and there it is out front, my new 2022 Mach 1. I think I was in the dealership signing paperwork for maybe 10 minutes tops. I toss my luggage in the back of the Mach 1, and I'm heading home. I can't tell you how good this feels right now. I've got a little over 1,400 miles to go home, but I'm going to go home in style. This may look boring to you, but to me it looks like heaven. This is, I just feel like I'm back at home. I know it's only been a couple of weeks, but it's a rough couple of weeks. This feels pretty good. Thursday night turns into Friday morning. The Mach 1 and I roll into Malvern, Arkansas at 1.15 a.m., and I check into a Holiday Inn Express, you know, stay smarter. Thursday was a long day, but I've knocked out six hours of the 22 and a half hours of the trip. Maybe seeing Nine Inch Nails in concert the night prior to leaving wasn't such a great idea. You know, whatever, rock on. 16 and a half hours to go the next day, no big deal. There was, however, one handling package memory I'd somehow forgotten about. Tram lining is the worst feeling in the cattle chutes beside a tractor trailer. And I know that the car's not gonna you know, jerk me over there, but just that jerking of the wheel is just not cool. I really hate these tires. I, I know that some of the folks out there like them, but I absolutely can't stand them. I am gonna tell you this time I'm gonna be buying Continentals for this car when I get back. And I'll probably be listing these things on eBay. In two so miles, anybody... take exit 123 oh, toward you. Arkansas 183, Bryant. Yeah, a little rock this morning. That's where I'm at. But yeah, if someone wants some uh, rarely, barely used, not tracked Michelin Cup 2s, you'll be able to find them on eBay. I'll be selling them in pairs, front and rear. Friday, I passed through Memphis, Nashville, and Knoxville, Tennessee, Blacksburg, Stanton, and Winchester, Virginia. Finally, Hagerstown, Maryland, and at 1.15, I am back in Pennsylvania. I roll into my driveway at 2.10, and I'm asleep by 2.30 a.m. The answer to the first question everybody probably has had and asked many times, it's a six-speed. One with a six-speed because I like driving a six-speed. I know the automatic's faster at the drag strip, and yeah, you know, I may not be as quick as the automatic cars, there's always somebody faster at a drag strip. Let's face it. I go maybe four or five times a year to a drag strip. I'm going to lose those days. Okay, great. But when I'm on a track, I'm on a back twisty road, I'm going to have fun. I'll be rolling some gears. The only difference on this one, as opposed to my 2021, one, it's a 2022. Yeah, I know they say they're down 10 horsepower. I'm going to go to a tuner and we'll see what they can say about that. I now have the red painted Brembo's which I didn't have before, I just had the gray. I don't think these stop any better being red, but they look a little bit nicer. This car has nav. I use Apple CarPlay. I'll probably never, ever use that. This one does have the cloth Recaros, which is something that I really wanted. It also came with a car cover, which is something I didn't have, and I thought about buying. For those folks out there that wonder why some of your dealers are saying that putting the, the extra splitter on the bottom or installing the gurney flap is track only, that came from Ford. If you look at that, it says right there, track use only. There's a bug on there. Track use only. <laughs> so they're not just making it up. That's where they're getting it from. They're getting it from Ford. This was 
in my gurney flat. But uh, yeah, I'm tickled pink. So for those out there that have them on order, hang in there. God bless you. Those that think you can't get a car for MSRP, dealers will work with you. If you say, hey, listen, I need a car. I'm willing to pay MSRP and no more. That's what happened here. So yeah, I had to make a pretty much a haul to get it, but I'm very happy I did. It's a nice car.